the darkness of his cell he hears footsteps approaching. He hears laughter and gossip. His father with others. He's not sure who he's with. He puts his ear to the door and hears a laugh. A deep, guttural laugh. He feels his skin crawl and his stomach twist in knots. It can only be Chief. He hates Chief, especially when he's with his pa. They make him do all kinds of things for fun and laughs. His pa brags about his killing tool, as he often calls him. More laughter. Other voices. Chief brought some deputies to enjoy the show. He wants to smash them all to bits just to make them stop laughing. Everyone laughs at him. The whole world laughs at him. He grinds his teeth with frustration. They ain't supposed to laugh. They're supposed to protect him, and he knows it. He's seen it on his TV. The only thing that calms him and keeps him company when he's done his work. TV is something special. The friend and parent he never had. But Chief. Chief ain't like those on TV. He's another kind of chief of police. The kind that works with Pa to clean money. He doesn't even know what that means, but he overheard them by the pig pen talking about cleaning a whole load of money and sharing that load with a judge and other men of the law. They clean money together. That's why Chief lets Pa and Ma do whatever they want to him. Chief is crooked, his Pa always says, crooked like his boy's face. The laughter grows louder. They approach his brick dungeon and he shivers at the thought of more slaughter. He's tired of killing to make a few deputies laugh, real tired. He feels his blood boiling, feels it rising through his neck, feels it pushing up his face like it wants to burst through his skull. A sudden high-pitching whistling noise fills his ears. He hits his head over and over again until the whining stops. Silence returns. For a moment, just a moment, and then a chain rattles. Bolts snap loudly and he loses balance and falls back to his haunches. The door opens, filling his brick cell with blinding sunlight. He covers his eyes with his arm. His paw steps inside, grabs him, and yanks him to his feet. Come on, boy! Let's show these deputies your worth. In the sweltering barn, he stares at the blood dripping from his hammer, feeling as though he were in a dream. Strange. Weird. Unhinged. No, not a dream. More like like he's living on a TV show, watching himself from a distance. Slaughtered cows, thick and wet, all around him, seven or eight of them writhing helplessly in warm, coagulating blood, heads cracked open, brain and gore spilling out, flies buzzing around him, buzzing in his face, buzzing in his ears, telling him this slaughter is who he is. This senseless slaughter is his worth, his only worth. Kill. That's what they love to watch you do. Kill, kill, kill. The flies are laughing at him, laughing with Chief and his deputies, telling him he's so useless he don't even have a name. Boy, what kind of name is that? His pa shoves him toward another cow. You ain't done yet. Boy raises his hammer and shakes blood from his eyes. He feels strange, weird, unhinged, fed up. He's had enough of this life, the cell. Shoveling manure, slaughter, endless slaughter, and taking care of those pigs, those prized pigs, pigs given more love by his parents than he ever got. The flies circle his face and laugh at him. The high-pitched whining returns. The pigs got names and you didn't. Duke and Donnie. He swats the flies. Pa nudges him. Come on, boy. Show him you can do more with that hammer. Boy. That's what Pa calls him, boy. That's what Ma calls him. They think he's too dumb to know he doesn't have a name, a real name. He knows. All his life he knew. He knew and imagined himself as Max. Max Thompson. Imagined his Pa was so proud of him that he gave him his name. How he dreamed to have his father's name. How he dreamed Pa shoves him. Come on, show him, show him now. Boy feels his face fill with blood, his veins swell with fury, his temples throb maddeningly. The next moments are a blur, blood and screams everywhere, not bovine, human. The whining begins again and he's confused, searching for his pa but not finding him. 
The whining stops, and everything is muffled. He turns to see Chief charging him. What have you done? Boy doesn't really hear him. It's like when Ma held his head in a bucket of water to teach him not to call or cry for her when he was a child. Everything's muffled, distorted, surreal. Chief tackles him and grabs the gory hammer out of his hand. You killed him! Your pa! Jim! Don! Ray! My men! My fucking men! Boy pushes Chief off and tumbles out of the barn drenched in blood, heading toward the main house, screaming for his ma in the growing dusk. Ma sobs on the ground with a mouthful of cracked teeth. Boy lifts her with one arm and a flood of inarticulate words rush out of his mouth. Words he only understands. Words the TV taught him. He wants to know his name, his real name. And she just stares at him, confused, lost, desperate. She gurgles blood and chips of tooth slip down the side of her face as she begs for her life. Even if she understood what he was saying, she could tell him nothing. My name, my name, what's my name? Boy slams his ma against the ground again and again. He lifts her over his head and hurdles her against the kitchen table. It breaks under her weight. Blood gushes from a wound in her leg. She loses consciousness. He feels bad and holds his limp body. Why, why did you hate me? What did I do to make you both hate me so much? Her face is beautiful and hideous at the same time, evil veiled by beauty. He hugs her harder and harder, wishing everything would have been different, wishing he were one of those damn pigs. They spoiled them with love, affection, and time, all that time they spent with Duke and Donnie while he groveled nameless and alone in a dungeon built just for him. He tries to lift her, but slips in a pool of her blood. She struggles in his embrace. Every time he asks the question, he squeezes her tighter and tighter. My name! What's my name? Her struggles cease, and she jerks spasmodically. Tense arms and legs go limp. He releases her slowly. Her head thumps hard in a puddle of blood. She stares upward with blue, vacant eyes. Beautiful blue, vacant eyes. Eyes that only saw a monster, a thing, a beast of burden to work the farm. Never a son, never her son. He hates those eyes, those, those hateful eyes. He rips them out and squeezes. They pop like bovine eyes. He smiles and doesn't really know why he's smiling. He wipes blood off his face and likes the mushy feeling in his hands. He hears a foot pound the floor behind him. Chief suddenly rushes into the kitchen. I'm gonna smash your head with your own goddamn hammer. But as he lifts the hammer, he slips in an inch of warm blood. Boy panics and rushes outside into the darkening woods, with Chief screaming and cursing and bullets whipping by him. Boy doesn't know how long he's been running, but he's tired. He hears Chief yelling and hollering after him in the distance. Says he regrets the day he told his parents to keep him as a farmhand. Says he told Ma and Pa that a monster kid would make a damn good worker. Says other things, too. Things Boy doesn't want to hear. Your parents tried to kill you, let a pot of boiling water spill over you, and told us you were a clumsy child. They says you pulled the pot down from the stove, but I knew better. I seen right through him. Too embarrassed of their deformed kid that they poured scolding water over him. Tried to kill you. Tried to make it look like an accident. Boy covers his ears. Flies buzz about, laughing. He doesn't want to hear this. A high pitch ringing echoes through his mind. Stop, stop, stop. But it won't stop. He knows he's the only one who can hear the whining and laughing flies. He knows he hears things. He knows his pa hurt him, hurt his head, screamed too loud in his ear when he was a baby, screamed mean things, mean things like he wished Ma's belly cord strangled him completely and not just halfway. He takes a moment to gather himself. He hears other voices. Chief called in more deputies. Doesn't matter. Let them come. They all deserve to pay for doing nothing while his ma and pa made him suffer. Boy squeezes the neck so tight, screams quickly fade into pathetic whimpers. Easier to kill a man than a cow. Only a man makes much more of a fuss. Boy stares in the deputy's panicking eyes and knows this one. Knows him well. 
This one laughed at him many times, laughed at him when he should have helped him. Who's laughing now? Didn't you watch TV? The police are supposed to help, not hurt. Laugh at me now! Boy lifts him off his feet and pounds the back of the head against a tree, over and over again. Laugh now! Laugh! Laugh! The skull splits open like a melon and brain mass hangs from one side. Boy releases him, and the dying deputy can barely keep his balance. He toddles left and right and stops in front of Boy, and for a moment he stares at him as though seeing something more than a tool or a freak show, something smarter than a mule, smarter and deadlier. The deputy seems lost and confused, like a mindless zombie on TV. The trembling, confused deputy shuffles forward, feeling his wet, mushy head. Boy moves to the side to let him pass, and stares at his good work, stares at the gore dripping from his skull like putty, watches him stagger left and right in the moonlight. If he were a cow, he'd end his suffering. But he's not a cow, he's something else, something vile and corrupt. Boy watches him disappear in the shadows. He stares at the darkness until he hears a thud. A strange feeling fills his heart and he laughs. Feels good to fight back and show them his worth, his real worth. Boy hears Chief searching frantically for him. He sits by a tree covered by bramble, squeezing a handful of deputy brain. It's got the same texture as cow brain. He probably couldn't tell the difference if he had a lump in each hand. He squeezes and likes the feeling. It soothes him, calms him, relieves his anxiety. His thoughts wander to his favorite TV shows. Ma and Pa let him have a TV to shut him up. They got tired of him smashing the wall and crying for them. Nothing worked, not the gag or the rope that he always managed to get out of. Only the TV. TV was better than any constraint. It kept him sitting down, passive, complacent, and quiet. Ma said it hypnotized him, and that was a good thing. The TV showed Boy so many things. Showed him how different his life was from other children. Showed him what parents should have been like. He wishes his parents were more like Clark's parents. They made a hero out of their son by just being good to him and raising him right. They took good care of him and he wasn't even theirs. Or the other parents, the parents of that other boy, Beaver. He had a good family, but he wasn't like them. He wasn't like Clark or Beaver. He came into the world hurt, deformed, and weak like a runt. His pa told him he had wanted to stuff him in a bag with rocks and throw him in the lake. Tough love, tough life, tough everything. He hears deputies shouting in the distance. Boy feels scared and does what he usually does in his brick cell. He closes his eyes and thinks of Clark and waits for the greatest of all heroes to save him. He never comes, and it's not like TV. He's always there to save the day. He's always there to help those who need help. But TV ain't reality, and he's alone. He's alone because he was born a crooked little beast. Boy opens his eyes and stares at the gory lump in his hand. Doesn't matter. Enough waiting. He's his own kind of hero today. Chief screams his anger, found bits and pieces of another deputy. Boy is picking them off like cattle in a barnyard. Chief swears to hell and beyond he'll make him pay. Make me pay? Me? You're the one who's gonna pay for letting me rot in that cell for all those years. Chief calms down and calls someone. Tells them to bring the dogs. Bring them. Won't make a difference. No matter what, he ain't ever going back to that cell or any other cell for that matter. He'll die a thousand deaths before they ever lock him up again. He wants to rush out of the darkness and grab him, but something tells him that's exactly what Chief wants. He's trying to lure him with hurtful words. Boy sits in the shadows and stirs the dry leaves with one hand. He sees a deputy approaching with a flashlight. He grabs a thick branch and slowly rises and inches toward him. A hare springs in the air and bounds away. The deputy trains the flashlight on the rodent. 
he releases an anxious breath just as Boy swings the branch like Babe Ruth. Head and neck are smashed open, and the dark contents splatter on the trees and ground. Yet the deputy doesn't fall. He stumbles here and there with his smashed head barely hanging by sinews of flesh, his hands desperately reaching out and feeling the cool night air. Reminds Boy of a decapitated chicken fluttering about the yard searching for its head. Boy smiles and feels liberated. He laughs to himself. Another deputy made clean. His pa cleaned chief's money. Now Boy cleans his deputies. Like father, like son. He thinks of chief and loses his smile. He could have helped him. All those years, he could have helped him. Boy, you want to know your name? I knows it. Come out and I'll whisper it in your useless mangled ear. Chief's playing games with him and he ain't gonna be fished. Chief swears he's gonna hunt him all night and that he's got dogs coming. Dogs that can track a cricket fart in a pile of manure. Boy didn't even know crickets farted. He learned a lot of things on TV, but never that. The thought of a cricket farting makes Boy smile. He likes smiling. He crawls closer to the police crew. Two new men on the hunt with Chief, but he doesn't see any dogs. He figures he'd best take them down before the dogs arrive. He's seen police dogs on TV. They can sniff out anything. These deputies seem angrier than the last. He's not sure if it's because he felled their friends or if he ended their cleaning racket with his pa. Maybe both. He just gets the sense if they catch him, they'll make him suffer and squeal like a pig. Those pigs, those damn pigs they loved so much. Why did they have to love them so much and him so little? Had they treated him like those pigs, he would have been happy. He would have been happy and he would have been something else. He would have been a hero like that boy who wore a cape and helped the world. All because of how his ma and pa raised him. Boy creeps up behind two deputies he can barely make out in the moonlight. He slowly raises a pointy branch, leaps out, knocks one head, and thrusts the branch through the mouth of the other before he can yell for help. He stares down at the blood gushing out like a geyser. Reminds him of a scene in a cowboy movie. He approaches the other deputy. The deputy turns and grabs Boy. They roll over the crunching leaves and fallen branches, exchanging blows. Boy manages to wrap his arm around his neck and squeezes. Legs thrash wildly here and there. Boy squeezes until they stop at once. He hears Chief calling back his deputies. He tells them to come back, says the dogs have arrived. Boy retreats into the bramble and shadows. He closes his eyes, imagines a different life for himself. He's the beaver boy, sitting at a table, eating a wholesome meal with his pa and ma, and they're asking about his day. Then everything changes when he speaks. The sounds upset his ma. She beats him across the head, holds him down, and pours hot sauce down his throat and tells him to never speak again. His pa grabs him and gives him a lashing with his belt. His eyes spring open. Everything could have been so different had he not been born a monster. Born a monster? Monsters aren't born. They're made. Made in a crucible of hate, cruelty, and abuse. Hot sauce and belts. That's the stuff of monsters. Your pa says you want to know your name. Stop running and I'll tell you your fucking name. Boy stops running. The barking of dogs grows louder and louder. He turns toward Chief's voice and sees moonlight dappling through branches and leaves. He shifts about in the silence, not sure what to do. Chief's voice grows louder. Your pa gave you a name before he realized you were a crooked freak of fucking nature. Your name shames him. That's why he hides you. You want to know your name? Come out with your hands up and I'll tell you. Before Boy realizes what's happening, a dog rushes out of the darkness and attacks his arm with a vicious mouth of sharp teeth and dripping slobber. Boy wheels towards a vague, fast-moving shadow and grabs the wrist before the hammer crashes down on his head. He throws the dog against the tree. He's never felt such strength, such power, such resolve. 
I have a name. He shakes the wrist, and the hammer falls with a thud in the gloom below. Boy wrestles Chief to the ground. Chief pulls out a knife. Boy grabs Chief's wrist and forces him to plunge it into his own belly. See my worth now, Chief? See my worth? Chief pulls the bloody knife out, but Boy doesn't give him a chance to react. He plunges his hand into his warm gut and squeezes something he doesn't quite recognize. Chief shrieks in agony, Son of a bitch! The dogs leap at Boy and rip him off Chief before he can do more damage. Boy smashes the dogs to the ground and searches for his hammer to finish his good work. Dogs slowly rouse and bark. He grabs a branch, smashes them hard, and charges away before they attack again. He runs for what feels like forever through the cold dark woods and heads toward the farm, toward the house where he always should have lived. It's still not too late. There are secret rooms in the basement, rooms where his pa hid his money and where his pa and ma could hurt him without anyone hearing his screams. He bets he could hide there a long time before anyone ever found him. He bets it would be real cozy, especially with his TV. And he bets he'll find his name, his real name in his pa's stuff. But not before he cooks himself some bacon. Some prized bacon. Oh! <laughs> 